The new season is a new occasion for interesting meetings, incredible discoveries, and curious stories. My name is Konstantin Koksin. I'm an ethnographer, Turkologist, traveler, full member of the Russian Geographical Society, director of the Museum of Nomadic Culture in Moscow. My name is Tinkai Kritova. I live in Kazakhstan. I study the history and culture of the Great Steppe. The culture of nomads of the Great Steppe is my favorite topic, which I have been researching for many years, and I have something to tell about it. I think that we will hear many new and unexpected facts from you. Welcome to Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. We all come from childhood. Genghis Khan, the great conqueror, the man who created the largest continental empire in history, is no exception. How did manage a Mongol boy from a small family of Borjigin, who lost his father at nine, became a captive, slave, outcast, not only to survive, but to unite the Mongol clans and get the title of Genghis Khan, the shiver of the universe. А объединить монгольские кланы и получить титул Чингисхан – потрясатель вселенной. Кто-то изображает его демоном, исчадием ада, бичом божьим, который пришел, чтобы разрушить все достижения цивилизации. Someone sees him as the wisest politician, the greatest statesman, who, on the contrary, united nations and put things in order on a fifth of the inhabited planet. The sources are contradictory. There are Chinese chronicles, Arabic and Russian chronicles, but it's a shame that when your neighbors write your history, they are often not objective. A unique book was written in 1240 by a participant in the campaigns of Genghis Khan. The title of the book is Naut Tovcho 1240. We read this text, and it is written everywhere, they, 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 and then he finally writes, we. The book was written in Chinese characters, still in the Mongol language, so until the 19th century, it was kept unused in the Chinese archives. The Chinese perceived this as abracadabra, until Russian researchers discovered it and realized that it was the Mongol language, not Chinese. The world has gained the greatest treasure. This is the level of the Iliad, Odyssey, the tale of Igor's campaign, an epic poem about the childhood, youth, and adult years of Genghis Khan, written by a Mongol. Слово о полку Игореве это эпическая поэма о детстве, юности и взрослых годах Чингис Хана, написанная Монголом. Let's talk about Genghis Khan's childhood. His father was Yasuge Batir, who was not a Han, although he came from a noble family. And like all Batirs, he gathered a team of daredevils and defeated his native land to understand the political situation of the Great Steppe at the end of the 12th century. Let's imagine who lived there in general. There were no Mongols, but there were tribes that spoke the Mongol language. Borjigans, Naimans, Ohalets, Honkirats, and many others. Найманы, анхалуты, ханкераты и многие другие. Were they scattered tribes? 
Они чувствовали свое единство. They felt their unity only when their neighbors Tatars appeared. By the way, they had nothing to do with the modern Tatars. The Tatars were also divided into groups and clans, white, black, wild Tatars. When the Tatar detachment appeared in the Mongol steppe, the Mongols forgot their feuds and began to fight with the Tatars. The Tatars were the cruelest enemies for the Mongols, as well as the Mongols were the most ferocious enemies for the Tatars. Therefore, the term Mongol-Tatar yoke or Tatar-Mongol invasion is absurd in itself. In the south beyond the Gobi Desert, there was a mighty power, Xi'an China. The Chinese knew that as soon as the steppe people united, China would be in ruins. The Great Wall never saved the Chinese Empire. China was saved by a very subtle and cunning policy, divide and conquer. They constantly pitted the Tatars and the Mongols. While the steppe dwellers slaughtered each other, the Great Empire slept quietly. The war did not stop even for a moment. The stories say that men were afraid to fall asleep, removing their armor. Arms were hugged more tightly than their wives. That is the era in which Yasuge Batir lived and the era in which his son Timujin was born. I heard that the father of Kingis Khan stole his future wife, seeing her only briefly in the cart. Is it true? There are two versions. The official version is that, no, it's not true. She was from the Olkhonats, a division of the Honkirat clan, from which the Borjigans always took their wives. They say that she had been taken away captive. The noble Yasugi Batir freed her and made her his wife. A romantic, chivalrous story. In fact, she was engaged to a Murgit. He saw the beauty. As the Mongol stories say, the heart of Yasuge was inflamed with passion. The groom, instead of fighting, rode off to Lake Baikal, vowing revenge. This is the most important story, the kidnapping of Holun by the hero Yasuge. This event, this look of the beauty and the passion of the Batir had changed the course of the whole history of humanity. What was the problem of Yasuge? He already had a bride as a normal Honkirat. The bride's name was Sochihel. They were allowed to have any number of wives, but they could not violate the marriage contract. He immediately had two wives and they started giving birth to his children. Ho Lun, a kidnapped elder wife, bore him five children, one daughter and four sons, Timujin among them. So Chihel gave birth to boys, Bektar and Bilgutai. So they lived, wandered between the rivers in northern Mongolia. This is the birthplace of Kingis Khan. Kingis Khan was born in the territory of the modern Russian Federation. In the Chita region, eight kilometers from the Mongolian border, the Mongols weep. They could have made one roaming so that he was born in our territory. Yes, Suge was a noble, wealthy man. The raids brought income. The children grew up. Once wandering around Kurilian in the winter, playing lamb bones on the river ice, Tiamujin met Jamuha, a man who would play a crucial role in his life. Jamuha was a son of a Han. He was a noble boy. But the game brings everyone together. It does not matter who the father is, a simple Batir or a Han. And they swore eternal friendship and became sworn brothers. When Holun gave birth to the son, they called for a shaman talking to heaven. Taking the child in his arms, he saw that tiny fingers were squeezing something. It was a blood clot the size of a lamb bone. The shaman said, Holun, you have given birth to a special child on the stormy night. Your baby will grow up and spill rivers of blood. Blood spilled that same night. Yasugin Batir returned from a raid on the Tatars and returned not just with the good prey, but he brought a captive, a Tatar leader named Timujin. He was glad that the wife had given birth to a son, not a daughter. He resorted to an ancient bloody custom. The Tatar was tied to a pole. Yasugin waved a knife, cut the chest of the Tatar and ripped out a living Tatar heart and sprinkled blood on his son with the blood of the Tatar heart. To consolidate this custom, which gave all the power of the executed to the newborn, he named his son a Mongol by the Tatar name Timujin. These are the kind of gifts father made to their son in the wonderful 12th century. Strength and courage does not bother anyone, but the gift was a trick. The Mongol boy bears the Tatar name. What should any Tatar do when he would meet him? 
носит татарское имя. Что должен сделать любой татарин, встретив его? must treat him as an enemy. He had to kill him according to the laws of blood feud. Tatars had the same traditions. They pulled out Mongol hearts and called their sons by Mongol names. Is it true that Timujin was engaged quite early? Yes, not only Timujin, but in general, there was a tradition to take care of children. When the boy was nine years old, and nine for the Tengrig Mongols, it's a sacred number. It was necessary to find a bride. Later, I will explain why it was necessary. Yasuge took his son and went to look for a girl, and went, of course, to the Honkirats. The leader of the Honkirats at that time was an old friend of Yasuge, Deisei Chen. They agreed that when the time came, Deisei Chen's daughter, Borte, translated as great eyed would become Timujin's wife. Timujin was nine, Borte was ten. She was a head taller, more mature. The girls grew up earlier, and according to the Mongolian tradition, Yasuge left his son with the Honkirat to be educated. That was the norm. At that cruel time, this tradition protected the girl. Imagine, you're ten years old, and they bring you your future husband, and he grows up in your family. Your mom, dad, bring him up. He gets used to the traditions of your family, to what you cook in the end. The Mongols believed that such a family would be stronger. On the way back, when Yasuge was driving home, leaving his son with the Honkirat, misfortune happened. No one knows what exactly happened 800 years ago, but they say he met the Tatars. What do you think they did to him? Mm -hmm. I heard the story. It is said that the Tatars poisoned Yasuge. They were not able to kill him. He saw their bonfire in the steppe, and the guest for the nomad is sacred. If my bad enemy comes here, who had killed my family, I will give him drink, food, protect him from enemies. Then I will accompany him to the borders of my land. Then I'll catch up and kill him there. They say that a bowl of poison was presented to Yasuge. They say that a bowl of poison was presented to Yasuge by the son of the executed Tatar Temujin. Mm -hmm. When he was dying, he managed to get to the yurt alive. He sent his squire to bring the boy back. Timujin did not find his father alive, but saw that everything in the camp was commanded by his uncle. Torgutai did not like Yasuge. He was a cowardly man, envied his brother, and decided to retaliate against his family. He accused Yasuge of having kidnapped Holun, provoking a war with the Merkets. He called for making his brother's family outcast. They took livestock, took the yurt, left an old, shabby one and roamed in a holy yurt through which the stars were visible during the day, as Timujin said. She did not save either from the cold or from the rain. Two women and seven children remained, the eldest of whom was ten years old. Why is it bad to be an outcast? They were left without support. They remained completely alone in the steppe. They called them nobodies. In the steppe, in a lonely yurt, anyone could just kill them for fun, rob, rape women, sell them into slavery. Starvation awaited them. Then, the ten-year-old boy first showed his character. He gathered his brothers and said, Brothers, we will not allow our mothers and sisters to starve to death. They began to fish. The Mongols do not eat fish. They tell with tears that Timujin ate fish. Is it true that Timujin killed his brother? Bector was the same age as Timujin, his paternal brother. He was a strong boy and decided that he did not have enough food, so he began to take food from the younger and weaker ones. Timujin and Kassar decided to kill Bector. Moreover, Kassar approached his brother from the front and Timujin from behind and fired two arrows. How old were they? About ten years old. They had children's bows, but you can kill a person from such a bow. They fired arrows and the brother fell dead. Do you know what Bector whispered before his death? What? Please, do not ruin my hearth. Do not touch Bilgutai. Before his death, the boy asked for his brother. Not so bad was Bector, as he is often portrayed. If dying, he asked for his brother. By the way, Timujin never offended Bilgutai and loved him more than his siblings. When the mother found out about the murder, the mother of Timujin, Ho Lun, grabbed his father's whip and beat him half to death. How could you, wolf cub, kill your brother? 
After all, we have no friends except our shadows, no whips except the ponytail. What will happen to us? Ho Lun was a wise woman. Imagine how Su Chi Hel, mother of the murdered boy, felt. She was not forced to stay with the rogue family. She could have roamed, but she remained with Ho Lun to support her, and Timujin killed her son. She cried. They did not live on an uninhabited island. People wandered past, and the rumor spread that Timujin had killed his brother. A shaman said to Torgutai, Timujin's uncle, that the wolf cub would grow up and tear Torgutai's throat. Torgutai was afraid of the boy. He sent 300 warriors. Timujin was hiding on the top of the mountain. He spent nine days there. There was no water there. He licked dew from stones. Then he decided to run, but was caught and brought to the residence of Torgutai. Timujin wore a wooden block around his neck for five years. This is a terrible punishment. A year later, the block was removed during the day. They made Timujin a slave. He became an apprentice with a captive Tatar, learned to forge iron, cut into wood, and he made shafts of arrows, spears, and tips for the uncle's army. When Timujin was 15 years old, he managed to escape. How did this happen? Timujin was a smart boy. It was a great midsummer holiday. The Mongols loved to drink. Everyone got drunk, even the guards. He stunned with the block. The guy who guarded him ran to the Kurilian River and rushed into the water. The block dried to a jingle and carried him with the stream. The boy did not calculate one thing. The summer was hot, the river became shallow, and he was stuck in coastal reeds. Of course, having become sober, the Mongols began to search for him and found him. But he was found by a man who did not betray Timujin, but saved him. Why? We do not know. Perhaps Torgutai did not honestly share the prey or something else. The son of Sargan Shit brought Timujin to his father in a yurt. Sargan was frightened. What have you done? I told you, just let him go. Why? If they find us, they will execute us. But the son answered, Father, we have to save him. If we release him, he will be executed. And the daughter, 14-year-old Kidan, said, Dad, if the bird flies into the thicket, saves the bird. Will our yurt not become that thicket for Timujin, who is in trouble? These are the most important lines of a sacred story for me as a historian. Sargon saves Timujin for revenge or fun, but is afraid to take a risk. But his children, the peers of Timujin, a boy and a girl, save him. They understand what they are risking. If Timujin is found in the yurt, they will all be executed. But they are ready to risk for the sake of a stranger guy who is in trouble. These boys and girls, when they grow up, will create an empire from the Yellow Sea to the Mediterranean. Timujin escaped. Mm. Wait, but how? Didn't they chase after him? Of course, they chased. Do you know who saved Timujin? Tatars realized that the boy would go to his mother. Where else would he go? And here, the Tatar army wedges between Timujin and uncle Torgutai. Torgutai was busy with the Tatars for two years, and a lonely outcast was of no interest to anyone. Timujin spent two years in a yurt with his mother and brothers. What do you think he was doing there? And he, you may not believe me, suggested his brothers working. In captivity, he learned to forge and cut wood. Timujin was a blacksmith. Many people who are related to Genghis Khan proud of it. The very name Timujin has a root meaning iron. Here, they see the connection of Timujin with other powers. They did iron things, cut wood, sold all this, exchanged for sheep. A year later, there was a flock, and the sheep is felt. This is warm clothing. Then, the sheep were exchanged for horses. After two years of work, Timujin had a herd of nine horses. How did it happen that he became a warrior and created a squad? The horses were stolen. They were outcasts. The rumor that brought them customers reached the ears of bad people, and they stole the herd. Then Timujin bust into tears. He did not cry when Uncle Torgutai beat him with a whip. When a block froze to his neck in the winter of minus 30, it came off with meat. He cried out of despair, two years of work, and he lost everything. In desperation, he sat on a lame mare, which the horse thieves did not take, and went in pursuit. On the way, he met another outcast, the future first army nuker. 
Together, they recaptured the horses, and Timujin realized that he had the bold idea that if one outcast helped another, then it would be easier to survive. Timujin began to unite the outcast around him. Was his childhood friend Jamuka there too? The life of Jamuka was completely different. Jamuka was a good boy from a good family. He did not wear a block around his neck. He attended holidays, met beautiful girls. You know, one of the most dramatic stories. He fell in love with Borte. Borte refused him. Borte told him that she had a loved one. Jamuka's heart was broken. By the way, when did the wedding of Timujin and Borte take place? Timujin was 18 years old when he remembered about Borte. He probably remembered about her before. But then he got courses. He put things in order at home and decided to get married. Mom discouraged him. Where are you going? She is already 19 years old. She might have two children already. At those times, girls got married early. He went there. Dae Se Chen recognized him and said the amazing thing that Borte was waiting for him. I think he wanted to achieve much more in order to provide for his future family. This is how many modern young people think. First, I get a job, buy an apartment, a cool car, then I'll think about the wedding, right? No. When Timujin, as a child, was in the Borte Yurt, he was not struck by carved cedar, silk curtains, and Han's outfits, since he was the son of a wealthy man raids brought Yasuge a steady income. Then he saw the splendor of the Han's yurt and realized that she was a Han Sha, and he was an outcast and a craftsman. Craftsmen were the most despised population in Mongolia. That is, the one who made something with his hands was nobody. It was necessary to fight and capture. He said, I can't pay the bride price. Dae Se Chen said, come on, your father saved my life. I should have raised you as a son. Timujin, your eyes are like fire and your face is like dawn. I feel that in time. You will sit tight in the saddle. Borte had been waiting for you. We'll celebrate a wedding, and then, when you get rich, you will pay Kalum. If only Doi Se Chen knew who this boy would become. If Doi Se Chen knew that he would throw a fifth of the inhabited land to the feet of Borte. If Doi Se Chen knew that after his death, Borte would rule a huge empire from the Yellow Sea to the Mediterranean. And the Hans and emperors and kings would wallow at her feet, asking for mercy. But he did not know that. He gave his daughter for a simple outcast, a shepherd and craftsman, being true to his word. Honor and praise be to him, the glorious leader of the Honkirats. How did it happen that he became a great warrior and gathered such a huge squad? Timujin became a warrior by misfortune. Borte was kidnapped almost immediately after the wedding by the Merkits, taking revenge for Holun, whom Timujin's father had kidnapped from them. Timujin. Timujin understood that he must bring her back and gathered an army. Van Han helped him, remembering the friendship with Timujin's father. Timujin himself reminded of his friendship, giving Van Han shortly before the kidnapping of Borte a sable fur coat, Borte's dowry. Even now, it is a good gift. Jamuka, having found that Borte had been kidnapped, could not help going to save his beloved woman. You know, Jamuka was the noblest person. He is often described as an antagonist to Timujin. No, he is the last knight of the steppe. He knew that he was saving his beloved woman to give her to his sworn brother. A mean person would not do that. But most importantly, outcasts flocked to Timujin. He became a legend. An outcast, a shepherd, a blacksmith, married a Han's daughter. Other outcasts thought if Timujin was lucky, maybe luck will smile at us too. For the sake of this beautiful story about a shepherd and princess, 40,000 soldiers mounted their saddles and headed north to Lake Baikal to smash the Mirkits. The war that historians call the Mongol-Trojan War began. Borte was waiting for Timujin, but one surprise awaited him. Hmm. Borte was pregnant. On the way back to Mongolia, she gave birth to a boy. Jochi, Jochi, do you know the translation? No, 
A guest? Whose guest? A guest from where? The army began to chuckle. They fought for a pregnant woman. The child is not his. Timujin gathered all the warriors, took the child in his arms, and said, This is my son. She was kidnapped being pregnant. Whoever says otherwise will learn the sharpness of my saber. The history of Kazakhstan and the history of Russia are connected with the eldest son of Genghis Khan, Dochi. He was not like the other sons of Genghis Khan. He was gentle, loved poetry, and spared entire nations, contrary to his father's orders. After the trip to the Mirkits, Jamuka and Timujin became friends. They were close again, as in childhood, when they played lamb bones on the ice of Kirulian. They became so close that Jamuka even moved to live in Timujin's camp. For the sake of Borte, for the sake of being with his beloved? Of course, to see her close, catch her eye. Borte understood that if there were any rumors or at least gossips that she and Jamuka had a liaison, she herself would destroy what Timujin had done. Timujin's character began to change. He became a tougher person. He could say a rude word. He was turning into Genghis Khan. While Jamuka was nearby, so charming, comforted, he used to say, come on, Timujin loves you so much. And for the sake of her female heart, she did not come up with anything better than a quarrel between two sworn brothers. How did it happen? They were traveling all three together, or rather four, Jamuka, Timuchin, and Borte, with little Jochi in the saddle. Once Jamuka, who was an active and cheerful guy, said, Timujin, look, the grass has withered. Let's drive the sheep into a neighboring valley. Timujin said, okay. Jamuka galloped there. Borte said, my husband Timujin, has Jamuka become your Han to decide where to feed your sheep? Timujin, Jamuka dreams of having power over the entire steppe. They did not quarrel, but began began to roam separately. Each of the brothers, they were 20 years old, began to develop new laws. Rather, the law of Jamuka was simply the newly voiced law of the Great Steppe. Whoever is stronger is right. If you sit in the saddle, shoot 20 arrows per minute from a bow, chop with saber, then you can steal the herds, kidnap the beauties, enjoy this short life under the eternally blue sky. This is the motto of the Huns, the motto of the Turks. What about Timujin? Timujin said, he said, in my Ulus, everything will be different. If you steal other people's horses, death. If you kidnap someone else's wife, death. If you deceive a friend, death. Was this the first edition of Yasi? Timujin did not think that he was creating something new. He thought of himself an outcast, as well as other outcasts, his friends. He could not betray them. After all, if the law of Jamuka continued to operate, the outcast would be outlawed. The main thing for Timujin was not to betray. The laws of Jamuka and Timujin were too different. Everyone realized that only a spark was needed so that a terrible fire of a rapid war would break out in the steppe. Пожар степной истребительной войны. У Джамухи был младший брат Тайчар. Джамуга had a younger brother, Тайчар. He went on a raid to steal horses and get married quickly. What brought him to Timuchin's camp? Usually, they would beat with sticks if they caught close people stealing their cattle, and they were close people. По новому закону Тимучина его догнали и казнили, когда Джамуха узнал об этом. Under the new law of Timujin, he was caught up and executed. When Jamuka found it out, he burst into the yurt of Timujin, black as a cloud, and demanded to extradite the people who had killed his brother. Timujin refused, citing his law. Jamuka left Timujin's yurt, telling him, You are no longer my brother. You've forgotten who helped you. You've forgotten who returned her to you. And the war began between the brothers, which lasted almost 20 years. Many times Timujin and his people had to drink rotten water and eat meat of their own horses. But the wheel of fate, like the wheel of history, always turns. Luck smiled at the outcasts. Timujin managed to negotiate with the Chinese and the Kereits, then with the Naimans. In the end, the outcast won. Кераитами, потом с тайманами. И в итоге изгои одержали победу. История не знает сослагательного наклонения. Если бы Тимучин... History does not know the subjunctive mood. If Timuchin had been accidentally killed by an arrow and Jamuka would have won, what would have happened? 
It would have been a clan state, like the Turks or the Huns, where the head of the clan, a Han, is an older man, rather a father for his subjects. Timujin had created an empire. He did not care about blood and origin. People of different nationalities and different faiths served him, for whom not the origin was important, but the general idea. That is the empire of Timujin. In 1206, under Mount Burhan Holden, he was raised on white felt and proclaimed king as Han. This is not a name, this is a title, the greatest of the Han similar to the ocean, the earth shaker. With this title, he went down in history.